Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 video. In this tutorial, we are going to pick up where we left off in the previous one, and we're going to talk about UV unwrapping in Unreal Engine 5. When a material uses textures for its channels, like base color or normal map or roughness, so on and so forth, it's typically is going to use um, models UV mapping to specify what part of those textures will get unwrapped around what part of the geometry and that process is called UV unwrapping. So in this video we are going to focus on the right tools to get this task done within the application. Let's get started. Here I am inside Maya. Now I am going to uh, bring Billy, the character that we used for our facial rigging for beginner series into Unreal Engine 5. And I'm going to do that twice, once with UVs, just to see how we can visualize our UV information inside Unreal Engine 5. And the second time without any UVs to see how we can UV unwrap a character or a 3D object if there is no UVs. Now, uh, a bit of a disclaimer here, still until this version, uh, for best result, I encourage all of you to UV map uh, your objects in a dedicated modeling tool, such as Maya, Blender, so on and so forth. Um, but it's not always possible. For example, when you import data from CAD modeling applications into Unreal, uh, you may not have high quality UV maps. So for those type of scenarios, you probably can use the software. Still very useful to understand the tools that we have inside Unreal so we can use it when the time is right. So right now I've got this um, UV islands available for the face, for the eyes and for the hair, and I'm good to go. Uh, I also, prepared a UV checker. So if I double click and bring over my UV checker, I made this UV uh, checker in UV checker maker uh, and it's an 8K texture. I'll, I'll make this available to you along with this little guy in my Patreon page so you guys can follow along. But for now, let's uh, select everything and go to either send to Unreal or export selection. I'm going to export it as FBX and export selection. Again, we talked about this process in the past. Smoothing groups on, scroll all the way down, make sure axis conversion, up axis is set to Z, and you export Billy. All right, let's switch back to Unreal Engine 5. My scene is ready. All I need to do is just to bring those models and the texture in, and we're good to go. Here I am inside Unreal Engine 5. I've got three rectangle lights and one simple skylight ready to go. Uh, so all I need to do is just to bring the Billy with and without UVs. So I've got Billy with no UVs and Billy uh, with UVs. I'm going to select those, bring those in. Uh, no need to uh, convert any scenes. So I'm going to select that and bring that into position. I'm going to press F on it and uh, we can see that we have Billy right here. I believe this uh, rectangular right has got a bit of a, too much of pink in it. So I'm just going to kill that. I want to get somehow a sort of a neutral color information. I'm going to press F and maybe, just maybe bring this to something like 40, bring my field of view. That's much better. Uh, it's got Lambert on it. You can see Lambert. I don't need Lambert, so I can just delete that. So let's bring our texture, UV checker. I'm going to bring the UV checker in. Double click on it. Make sure sRGB is on because we are going to use it for base color. Now I'm going to double click on my material and in here assign that to my material. So UV checker comes up here. There I have my UV checker. 
my roughness should be set to one i don't want billy to be super reflective apply save again we talked about all of these steps in previous videos that's why i'm not spending too much time on it i'm going to right click force of habit make an instance out of my master material material instance and i'm going to drag that into billy so we are going to see the right checkerboard in there because we already have uv islands on this guy and um, it's only expected to see correct uv information all right now we're good to go the only thing i need to do is to load the plugin or make sure that the plugin is loaded so we have access to the right tools last step of our preparation i'm going to go to plugin i need two plugins for this one is uv editor make sure that it's on once it's on then you restart the engine if you already have this on then you have nothing to worry about you may have noticed that at least for this version it's set to experimental so we should expect to see some glitches also if i type in mod link make sure that you have modeling tools editor also enabled because uv editing tool is part of this modeling editor tool set so you have to have both of these plugins turned on all right i'm in the modeling mode so shift 5 switches from your select mode into modeling mode and we're good to go first things first i'm going to visualize my uvs in the static mesh editor so if i click on my model and press ctrl e i switch to static mesh editor so uh, the good thing about that is you can actually see the model first adjust uh, level of details adjust materials if you want to but you also can access its uvs and surprisingly we have two uv channels so if i click on this one this is actually what i made in maya and that's all good it shows it correctly but there is another channel and that channel is just doesn't make any sense. I'm not really familiar with this. Now, sometimes you run into this issue. It's really not an issue. Basically, what you see in the second channel is not the UV information for your textures. It's actually your UV information for your lights. So what I see in this UV channel is the information that's been stored for my light maps. Now, in case if you don't know what a light map is, is a special kind of texture that stores pre comped lighting information for all the meshes that you have in the scene. So if your light, if I just come here and select the light, if your light is set to static or stationary, then I have no choice but to go in here and build lights. And as soon as you build light, Unreal Engine uses this information through the light mass tool to save all the indirect lighting information into light map textures so basically what i'm trying to say is don't touch that what we use is channel zero and remember that channel all right so that's how we see our uh, uv information in unreal engine there is another way of seeing actually the information in unreal engine and that is through modeling uh, tool set and going into uv's layout if i click on layout you can see that my uv information is actually displaying right next to the character now the funny thing is this is not what i made uh, the uv islands are the same but the order and position of them have changed as soon as i clicked on layout simply because layout by default is going to reposition and rearrange my uv islands if you want to see the original one the one that i actually made you go to uv layout layout type and set that to transform that is what i made in maya now you may say well what's the point of the other two repack is going to keep your uv islands or uv shells is just going to reposition it 
for better real estate so you get a much better use of space sometimes and the other one is stack which Unreal tries its best to stack all the UV islands on top of each other as much as it can. Well, you do see an okay checkerboard in here, but you have overlapping UV shells. So for a character, that may not be a big of a deal, but if you're modeling a prop and you've got, let's say, wood fibers, all of those fibers are gonna overlap and your texture gonna look really, really weird. So you have to be careful. Again, if your purpose of doing this is just to visualize what's going on, then set it to transform. And you can, of course, change the scale if you want. So it scales up the display and gives you a finer checkerboard. You can actually use a checkerboard here through preview material, use a checkerboard. Uh, use the original that I assigned to this very material or you can go ahead and override it with the material that you pick. So it can be just a default material that you have in mind. As a matter of fact, I always have a UV checkerboard in my content drawer. So I use that as an override. Sometimes I just want to toggle between my original texture and my checkerboard in that case override would be a good example for now the whole idea is to focus on the uvs so my original material is actually my uv checkerboard and of course you can turn it on and off if you feel like this window is not needed you just want to see the checkerboard or you can actually reposition it we'll bring it from the right hand side to the left hand side or even scale it here. It's not going to scale the UV checkers, it's just going to scale this window right here or even reposition it. So I can actually move it up and here in case if you need to. You can of course turn off the wireframe. With that you can actually see what's going on here and it makes it slightly easier to have a look at things. Once you're happy with uh, your model and you feel like you know, you've know you already um, repacked it the way that you want, you go ahead and click accept. In my case, not interested, I'm just going to cancel. So that's how you visualize your UVs inside Static Mesh Editor. And of course, with the help of Layout button inside the Modeling Editor. Let's go to the next chapter and see how we can UV unwrap a model from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this guy with Billy with no UVs. So we see how we deal with no UVs uh, in case if the situation calls for it. By the way, before we move on to the next chapter, you may ask how to delete UVs. You can just uh, easily select um, Vox Wrap. So select your model, apply Vox Wrap to it. It actually turns your model into voxels and now you can see this model does not have UV. So if I go to layout, you can see the UVs are gone, but I personally would never do that because you just change the topology of your mesh. So if I go to lit and go to wireframe, you can see all of a sudden we have a very dense model and that was not the case because Unreal Engine actually turned your model into a bunch of voxels and that is the original topology that I had in mind and I really don't want to touch it. So I'm going to bring Billy with no UVs in the next chapter and see how we can benefit from these tools to very quickly UV unwrap a static mesh. So I've gone ahead and replaced the old Billy with the new one and the new one does not have any UVs. So if I go to layout, you can see there is nothing in there. Where should we start? Uh, select the model and well, first things first, I need to make sure that the material that I created is applied. So the material is there, but again, we're not going to see any information in there. Uh, the easiest tool and uh, the first one to try is actually Auto UV. That Auto UV is actually going to unpack and rearrange your UV shells 
automatically. You have no control over where the seams are and how this UV coordinates are going to be created. But well, it's fast and it's easy. So let's go auto UV and voila, all of a sudden we get a checkerboard on our model. Now, first things first, UV channels set to UV zero. That's what we want. We have three types of UV creation, a patch builder, UV Atlas and X Atlas. They're diff three different methods of UV mapping. I am not going to get into the technicality of what UV is going to use, what algorithm and how it's going to change it. Best is to try and see which one gives you the best result. I'm also going to change the material into original so I kind of see better what's going on. You can see it's not that pleasing. I can bring in the UV layout to have a sort of a clear version of what's going on here. You can see we've got too many islands, seams are everywhere and it's um, not the best scenario. Uh, so best thing to do is to play around and see what attributes you can change to improve on a situation. I basically noticed that patch builder is not my favorite if I have to use auto UV. The one that I found uh, the closest to my taste is actually X Atlas. And again, the algorithm is different. For example, if I bring this one here, um, that's an article from Microsoft talks about how UV Atlas works. I put the link in the description below. Just go through it if you're very interested to see how each method works. Uh, UV Atlas is there. It takes probably the longest. As you can see, it's now calculating and it gives me a sort of a different result. But X Atlas is actually very quick and it gives me a good result. Still, seams are not ideal. And um, again, you may or may not want to use this since it's pretty quick. I personally not a huge fan of Auto UV. So the good thing about Unwrap is you can actually define your own islands and that gives you more freedom. So if I readjust the model and go Unwrap, you can see right off the bat, it gives you more attributes. Now, the one that I really like is actually not existing UVs because I did not have existing UVs, but polygroups. So you can actually prepare the model and say, you know what, I'm going to use polygroup. And by now, hopefully, you know different ways of creating polygroups. Um, so one way is through try select, where you can actually select the model and create polygroups. Let's say I'm just going to draw and say, you know what, that is one area that I want to have as a UV island and uh, holding down shift to delete the areas that I don't want. And I'm going to say, I want this to be a polygroup. So you go and use that as a polygroup. And then you can say, you know what? I want the ears to be a separate polygroup. So I'm going to go in here and select the ear. And again, you yeah, can zoom in and spend all the time in the world to be as clean as possible. Now let's say I've got the ear selected. I'm just gonna go through it really fast, but of course when the time comes, you kinda need to uh, take more time and be accurate. But let's say that is going to be a polygroup. And then I'm gonna select the nose with nostrils and everything, and I'm gonna make that a polygroup. And I'm gonna go accept. With that, I'm gonna go and click on unwrap. Now, it's still a bit stretch, obviously, because I did not um, put any seams on the face. It's just the nose and 
uh, neck and two ears. But if I go to layout, you can see it actually listened to what I suggested. So I have two ears and if I zoom in, you can see I've got uh, B9 here. And if I go in here, you can see B9 is there. So I've got the ears, I've got the neck ready to go and I've got the face, which is still pretty terrible, but you can actually work on it and give the front face a polygroup and the scalp back of the head a separate polygroup and really bring it together. So the fact that you can actually test and try your own islands, UV islands, will give you a great result. Now, just one quick thing about this window since it gives you way more options to work with. For the unwrap type, I tend to use conformal because it's a little bit expensive, but it reduces the stretching, whereas XMAP is very fast, but sometimes it fails to deliver the required result. But still, anything you choose, it still goes through the UV islands that you picked through this UV unwrap tool, which um, gives me the, the, the most amount of flexibility, if I may, to spend the time, convert certain points or certain faces into certain poly groups. And with that, you can get the job done. In hard surface modeling, I found this very, very useful, especially you don't need to deal with um, hundreds and hundreds of polygon on an organic model with hard surface. Let's say if it's a plank of wood, um, all you need to do is just to select the top face and surrounding faces, make them a poly group, back face a poly group, job done. Now let's go to the next one, project. Now the next three tools may work together. So the first one project is something that may sound familiar to majority of you. If you've worked with application packages like Maya, we have projections, UV projections in Maya, and that pretty much does the same thing. So it creates a type of a projection plane. If I click on this, we've got the targeted UVs and then we have a plane which if from that plane you get a snapshot and that creates the UV shells. Now you may say wow that is pretty neat, very clean, uh, there's actually nothing wrong with that and that is true but um, as soon as I start rotating you can see I'm getting stretching happening on the sides because it's only projecting from the front and it uh, goes all the way to back but sides usually look terrible now you have uh, in here cylindrical projection which is good and also box which is not too bad i found that sometimes box actually works really well especially with prop modeling not much with character modeling but um, usually with projection because we don't have enough complementary tools such as unfold, this will fall short and may not give us the result that we want. We've got um, auto fit as well that can sort of uh, fit it. So if you only look at an object from the front view, then this will give you the exact silhouette with somehow a, a little bit of inaccurate aspect ratio, but gets the job done. So you can see that these um, squares are not really squares, they're still stretched a little bit, simply because I set the projection to auto fit. So you can go auto fit align, reset, you can go even here and can rotate that like so, and you can somehow scale it to bring this slightly closer to an ideal, evenly distributed checkerboard. So now the aspect ratio is good. So you can see it's not really automated. You have to scale it properly, rotate it and realign it. But all in all, this tool is available in case if your object is not going to be seen from the sides. And if that's the case, this tool is for you. You can use it and get results. Next one is edit seams. So if I go ahead and unwrap using polygroups, you can see we have a seam here 
and we have a seam around the ears as a matter of fact i can turn off the visibility of the hair we can see we have seams around the ears we can actually edit and add seam so as soon as you go seam edit uh, you can actually see the seams now i can go in here and add a seam like that and i can go and carve out uh, this cut at the back of character's head so when that opens uh, you get a slightly better result last tool is xform uv and that is responsible for transforming uv information in your uv space so if i go to layout xform uvs it looks at each island and it says if you wish to move or reposition your uv island you sure can for example with the nose uh, i can see m12 i can actually select that and reposition that so i'm going to go into m12 and if i can move that to let's say a12 now you may say reza why it's that important sometimes you actually want to line up patterns you have patterns which you would like to line up so if i go in here into layout um all of a sudden you can see my uv island for the nose actually moved i can do that again so you can see the position of this little guy will change if i go in here and select this uv island and this time I bring it further. If I go to layout, you can see it's moving down and basically we're losing control of this. Uh, so double-edged sword, sometimes it's good if you have a sort of a repetitive pattern. It's a really good idea to use this tool to line things up. But at the same time, you going to be you need to be very careful not to overdo because then you may run into some problems. For example, now I moved it up and it's overlapping. If I go to show wireframe, you can see now the nose UV island is overlapping with the back of the face UV shell. So these are the things that you can run into. Again, we talked about this. This tool is still work in progress, but I still want you to know about this tool and its capabilities. So in case if you need it, you can just bring these tools to use. All right, that should do the trick for this tutorial. Thank you very much as always for all of your love and support. Stay safe and see you in the next video.